guys, Motorcycle Boss. So, I have a master cylinder rebuild that needs to be done on this for the front brake. Uh, I'm supposed to do the rear brake as well. You always want to do them in pairs. About every four years, whenever you notice that your uh, brake is getting a little bit spongy and you still, and you still have good brake fluid in there, because that might be uh, just time for your rubber seals to get swapped out. So it's time for me to knock that out. I'm not going to be doing the rear simply because I never use it, even though I know I should do it. Do as I say, not as I do, I guess. <laughs> so this video will be explaining the process of how to rebuild the ZX-10 from 2011 through 2015. Your master cylinder will, may differ a little bit, but the process will simply be about the same. So let's get to it. So to start off, we have to drain the fluid that's in here so that way no more new fluid is being introduced into the master cylinder. And this is gonna have this little retaining clip right there. Yours may be a little bit different depending on the bike that you have. So we'll set that aside. We're gonna get a couple towels because brake fluid is not good on paint. So we wanna cover up all the painted surfaces that may come into contact with brake fluid during this process. Be as thorough with this part as you feel that you need to be. So take this off. That's a good thing we got everything covered up. Now you can use a turkey baser for this part or whatever means you find necessary to drain this. I like to use the pneumatic leader for this part just because it's convenient to me and it's pretty fast. Now that's nice and drained. So we will move on to the next part. So I took my windshield off so that way you guys can see a little bit better. But I'm going to angle this up just a little bit in order to get a little bit more clearance, be able to see things a little bit better. So there's a couple bolts that are holding this whole assembly on for my lever and the master cylinder. And I'm just going to loosen those bolts just a little bit. Just so I can tilt everything up just a little bit. Make sure I don't put too much stress on my brake line. And then I'm going to tighten, tighten it back up. Just so that way things are a little bit easier to see. And now I'm going to take the pin right here that holds my lever in place. I'm going to take that out. Just crack that loose. That bolt. And then we'll get flathead. Just back that out. Now we're going to end up cleaning all that. We're also going to clean this pin when we reassemble everything. You'll see this pin right here is part of the master cylinder assembly. We'll get to that next. So this is what was going inside of our brake lever to actuate the brake. And we have this dust seal boot right there that's kind of holding that in place. If we just pull that off to the side a little bit. It'll actually start to pull that assembly out. So now that boot has some grease in it. And it has like a ball joint. So that way it can this can flex. And this is the uh, the end of our master cylinder piston right there and you should be able to see there's like a c-clip inside I'll actually see if you guys can see a little bit better so we're gonna use these these uh, circlip pliers we're gonna get that snap ring out, push it in, pull, now you're going to want to hold the piston in at the same time that you do this because it's going to want to jump out because you do have a spring in there, okay, be a little tricky, so 
now. And slowly release pressure. Make sure you have a number of towels underneath. So that's that snap ring. Now this is going to be the piston assembly. And I do have a number of towels underneath it. And the piston you'll see here has one cup seal and another seal. So we'll set that aside. And we're not done yet. We still have a spring. So you'll see this. This part was sitting inside further down and it's a spring guide. Our, our rebuild kit, we have a replacement one of these. So we'll take care of that. Now we're gonna want to throw a flashlight in there just to see if there's any corrosion. We're pitting. And from what I can tell, I'm not seeing any. Seems pretty clean. So now we'll get on to the rebuild. We have all of our old parts here and we have the rebuild kit. So let's get into that, show you what's inside. So in the rebuild kit, we get a new circlip. We got two new seals. We have that pivot piston that came with the boot. We have the boot itself, as well as a new piston. And we have the, uh, the guide rod for the spring and a new spring. So you'll notice this guide rod for this particular bike uh, has a little bit of a flared end to it. So that is the, the part that this part goes into. So just keep that as a note. Not all rebuilds will look like this. This one does have a decent number of extra parts that aren't really associated with any other uh, master cylinder that I've been super familiar with. So just know that it may vary depending on your bike. So you'll notice on the old piston, might be a little bit harder to see, but these two seals right here and right here actually have a direction and a placement. They are two different seals. One is thicker, one is thinner, and they are facing a particular direction in order to apply pressure to the braking system. So we have to get these two seals in the exact same place uh, on the new piston. Now, if you needed to and you got a, a rebuild kit that didn't include a new piston, you should be able to use the old one no problem as long as there's no excessive rusting and pitting and, stu and such. So, But simply because I have it and because I paid for it, I'm going to use the new piston. So in order to get the seals on, we're going to get some brake fluid. Just gonna fill up a little cup with it. And we're going to start with the bigger one, which seems to be on top. I'm just making sure these are the exact same. It seems like they do vary a little bit. So let's see how this goes. So the thicker one will go in this part and the thinner one will go in that part. I'm going to start with a thicker one. Now I'll tell you now, this may be a challenge. I've had to fight with these many times in the past, so don't be surprised if this is not an easy process. Now, I had to take you off camera for a second because, like I said, that was kind of a pain. Uh, this one, being the smaller one, was much easier. However, I had to get the bigger one, which was extremely difficult to get over this end. 
Try not to use any screwdrivers, picks, anything like that because it may possibly have a bird, e uh, bird edge and could cut it um, while trying to install it or scratch the rubber in some, at some point, making it where it doesn't seal very well. So now that we have this, we can go about reassembling the master cylinder. We're going to take our rebuilt piston to make sure that it doesn't have any nicks in the rubber, any crazy gouges, scratches, hairs, stuff like that. Once that's good to go, we're going to take our spring and our alignment rod is what I like to call it. And we're going to put it in all the way down. We're going to put this down to the bottom. Now you do want this to be centered just like that. You're going to take your piston. You're going to put the spring inside the piston. And while pushing down, this is the tricky part, you have to get your clip back in. I'm gonna have to release pressure a little bit. Wrap this around it. I'm actually going to angle them this way. It may make my life a little bit easier. So push the piston in. We're going to put that pin in place and you're going to want to push down until it clicks in place. Make sure it's clicked all the way around. It's fully seated. Now we're going to clean out that cup area. So because we have this pivot pin that's going to be sitting in there, this does need to be lubricated. However, we will have this rubber boot covering the whole thing. And if you use any petroleum based uh, grease, it can degrade the rubber over time. So you want to use a silicone based grease. So I'm using some silicone paste here and we're just going to drop some right in the cup. Now we're going to want to take our boot and our uh, pivot pin, push it through and we're going to want to pull it until we get the seal over that first lip. There we go. Now we will put this in. And we'll push this boot all the way in. Try to use light pressure if you're using a pick of some sort. You don't want to poke a hole in that. But you do want it recessed in there. Okay. Now we will clean this area for our lever. Now it's time to put the lever on and I have already lubricated the inside with um, silicone grease as well as the pin just to make sure I have adequate lube. Now you'll see that there is a hole in here. I believe you can see that. And that is what this is supposed to line up with. So just line that up carefully.
If it doesn't want to line up, you can take a pick or something and move that hole just a little bit. Try to get it to line up again. There we go. So now I'm going to line up the hole for the pivot pin. Make sure I get that all the way through. I'm going to get the nut for the underside. is moving with it so I'm gonna have to tighten that down just a little bit more hold it sorry if I'm obstructing your view okay there we go and now we will move on to brake bleeding so I've re-angled my lever I got done doing the brake bleeding just a second ago. I do have good pressure. However, I do feel like I probably have a few little micro bubbles left in there. So I'm gonna do my, my trick. Just try and get a few of those out. So that's how you rebuild a master cylinder. Uh, like I said, it's going to be different depending on the bike that you have. You may have more or less parts. You may have to do a few different things. I do see um, that it's fairly common to actually remove it from the bike, the whole master cylinder assembly, and then put it back on. I feel like it's a little bit more cumbersome that way in my opinion. So uh, do you. But I just got done, you know, brake bleeding, everything like that. And if you want to see why I put the zip tie on the brake lever, I will put a link uh, either right now or in the description so that way you can understand exactly why I did that but uh, definitely appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video I hope it was able to help you in some way and I really hope that you guys put a comment down you subscribe all that definitely appreciate you guys I'll see you I'll see you next time